So this is kind of the structure of the course. Um, it has been evolved, evolving. Uh, we started with some sketch of the course and uh, the experiments on other students and the ones who survived uh, told us how to do it better in the next edition. Uh, we are now doing the uh, number six version of the course. This is the first time that we're doing it in the spring. Um, over time, we have uh, been evolving towards teaching more about economics. The interesting aspect of open source is that when you look at it only from the point of view of the economist, it makes perfect sense. Um, all the difficulties that people have to understand how that you can create businesses by giving software away for free, uh, they dissolve when you analyze the entire aspect of the software um, industry as a whole, where you have to in include um, the human capital and the intellectual uh, contributions that come from the community into that pool of resources. So economists are the uh, sector of the population that has no trouble at all understanding open source. For them, it's obvious. Um, business um, and MBAs have a lot of trouble. So, because it, for them, it's, it's very hard to think about something that's different from the model of selling costs. They are too accustomed to the notion that you come with an idea, get a patent from that idea, make a box, send a box. It's too narrow minded in that sense. So economics have been uh, a central topic in the course. It helps a lot to explain uh, copyrights, patents, business models. And um, as an interesting corollary, it shows you how you should run an open source community to make it an efficient system. So it's uh, about the efficient allocation of resources that you have around and how to uh, induce them to contribute to the goal of your project, whether it is to develop software or information and the to the Wikipedia. Um, so economics have been an interesting aspect of, a central aspect of the course. Uh, the more the intellectual monopolies, um, so those copyrights and patents, derived directly from the, the introduction to economics. Uh, licensing follows. Uh, the need to remove the intellectual monopolies, and that's what we have with licenses to uh, solve the market failure that is induced by copyrights and patents. And uh, we have also been covering uh, more lately uh, the practices of, of the, the social aspect of community. Reinforcing the idea that the open source software is really not about software. It's really about human relationships. And that, you know, for geeks is not exactly what we like to talk about usually. We are comfortable with these notions. But in practice, the reality is that um, these communities have very strong personalities, very strong egos, um, very strong uh, feelings about, I'm good at this, I did that, this is my piece of the code. Uh, so it's, it's a lot about the human, the squishy aspect of our, our human connections. Um, people that work in open you know, source are, are looking for meaning. They are looking for an identity. Uh, so once you understand the human motivations of participants in an open source community, you can do better on managing those, those relationships. As opposed to thinking that it's just a bunch of kids trying to write code. Um, that's kind of the superficial approach to an open source project, but you really need to have uh, a better understanding of how this community works. But on a side note, it's actually a big problem that these communities are uh, disproportionately uh, male-based. So there are not enough uh, women in open source in general, not in software in general, not in engineering in general. And that actually shows up in the way that many of these communities get fractured and, and they are somehow dysfunctional. <laughs> because uh, you have a lot of male competition that is based on I'm better than you. Um, that would not happen in the present the presence of, of, of a woman. It's, it's very interesting to analyze how different communities, depending on their interest, have different proportions of male and female, uh, and how they get along better when the women are around. So we have to figure out a trick to bring more women to uh, not only open source software, but in general the software industry. Okay, so this is kind of the sketch of the curriculum, the, the classes that we uh, teach. The course runs for uh, four months, so 16 weeks. Uh, we meet twice a week. Uh, the sessions are essentially two hours, uh, so Mondays and Thursdays. And we try to cover, it's starting from economics, so we can introduce uh, intellectual monopolies, copyrights, and patents. Okay. And then we, on that basis, we can talk about software patents that are particularly evil type of patent. Then uh, licensing, uh, we look at specific examples of open source projects that um, actually the course is called open source practices. So we try to be not just theoretical but actually show the students how the things actually work in these communities. One of the common challenges of the course has been to really put the students to work in 
real open source projects. And this challenge relates to the fact that it takes a while to get introduced in the community. So you knock at the door and they will not necessarily answer. They will not necessarily answer nice. And it may not be fast enough for the students in the course. And the, the experience that we have had has been very good and very bad. So we're still trying to find the, the secret sauce that will uh, make possible to uh, standardize that experience for the students, make sure that they, they go um, and get acquainted with what the mailing list, working with a large community, um, the tools, the provision of the systems, and um, code review tools, and so on. Uh, so because I feel we're very involved in any of these projects, but we try to engage the students in there, but this is still something that we have not, this is the kind of the missing piece of the course that we're still working on. Um, in the last two editions of the course, we have important with Vista, so coming back to our previous story, and that have helped in some directions, but not in others. Uh, Vista is a very particular type of project, so the students have been exposed to certain aspects of open source, but not others, because the, the project itself is kind of good enough. Um, Alright, we talk about business models. Um, it's important for the real plan to work that people who go into open source uh, actually make money. Uh, they may go to pay their mortgages and uh, send their kids to college so that they replicate. Um, so we talk about the, the typical business models that work very well with open source, essentially uh, the subscription model, support, consulting. All the models that are based on services are very compatible with open source practices. So you don't have any interest in restricting the access to your code. You actually want to let the code uh, do the marketing for you. And the money comes in the form of you providing services to people who have other things to do with their lives. And they don't, they don't want to read the two million lines of code that you have in the software, they just want it to work. Um, we have been going about open access publishing. If you follow the, the academic, um, the state of academics in publishing today, we have heard about open access and, and the challenges that are. Uh, the challenges that colleges have, the high prices of scientific publications, and how they are addressing those challenges in a similar way that the open source community has been working. Uh, we call the Wikipedia. The Wikipedia is still the uh, perfect example of peer production. Uh, if any open source project aspires to be one fraction of the Wikipedia, if you could manage to get these 50 million users work for free for you, uh, you also. So it's still the ultimate example of uh, not only the Massive participation that the, the social engineering of the Wikipedia is out of the world. They have managed to figure out how to convert somebody who arrived to the Wikipedia to vandalize the Wikipedia. They have predefined procedures to convert this person into a computer. And that's just it's the beautiful understanding of how the human mind works. Um, they look at that panel uh, that goes to Wikipedia and they say, this guy has free time, his computer, and internet connection, and knows how to make it a Wikipedia. So we just need to learn one factor more, and we will turn this in, from a bundle into a powerful computer. That's the positive thinking that it's, it's important to appreciate. Uh, we also do hands-on exercise, exercises this year again. So we are working on Vista. Students have been learning months. Um, some of them are not very happy with that, to be honest with you. But we have to reinforce that with the notion that this is a very important language to learn, and it's a very important project for the country. Business models, we covered that. Um, teaching about the free market, uh, one of the, the challenges for people to understand free, free and open source software is that people have forgotten what the free market is. Uh, we are talking about the notion that you go and buy the software and you become prisoner of a vendor. And that is market failure, that is not the free market. Free market is when you can uh, do what you do with buying cards. When you want a car, you go to the market and find 20 different companies selling you that product. Uh, you don't have that today in the market industry in the software industry, as a total market failure. Um, so going back to the principles of the free market economy and actual real capitalism is very important for the students to, to understand. And we covered business models again, so that, that's pretty much the part of the course. Um, because of the things that we do at Pittsburgh, we also put a lot of emphasis in quality control. Um, to be honest, not all open source softwares are born equal. Some of them promote more attention to the quality of the software, the documentation, the testing, and so on. So we are very um, adamant about inducing these concepts in the students because it really makes a difference between a project being functional or being just a hobby uh, if you adhere to good practices of software engineering. All right.
right? So that, that, that covered the course. Um, one of the things that we are hoping to do is to promote the creation of similar courses in other places. The university company, for example. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are the, there's a community of fishing open source that is um, heavily backed by Red Hat, trying to create these courses. There's a lot of material out there, and so if anybody wants to go after initiating one of these courses or introducing some open source uh, concepts in the different engineering courses, there is a lot of people out there willing to help. Thank you. 